Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests, uh, dear chairman of Forasis, Dr. Frank Richter, we are starting our session in the Greater Caspian region, nurturing a global common future. First of all, I would like uh, to speak a little bit about the Greater Caspian region. What it is, Greater Caspian region? It's a new definition, and uh, uh, this is a big region, five million, more than five million square kilometers of uh, area, more than 500 million of people, and the all countries surrounding Caspian Sea, Black Sea, and also Central Asia. And the bordering countries like Afghanistan, like Pakistan, a little bit, the north part of Pakistan, because it's uh, also very important for the region. Uh, and uh, this region is uh, very rich in oil and gas, also in mineral resources. Uh, it's a logistics crossroad, uh, north-south and the east-west corridors, logistic corridors. Uh, this region is also strategically important for Belt and Road Initiative from the Chinese government because it's a central part of the ancient Silk Road for the thousands of years already. And uh, this is a future point of growth for the global economy. And uh, we will discuss here how to develop, how to increase, how to boost cooperation between India and the Greater Caspian region. On the other side, India is a subcontinent with uh, more than 1.3 billion people and uh, fast, uh, one of the fastest growing economies in the world and India having a great future. That's why cooperation between Greater Caspian region and India is really what we need to concentrate from, our, from both sides, from our region side and also from India. Now I would like to introduce speakers uh, who will speak today on this session and countries uh, they are representing. I will just give a few words about each country and then our uh, uh, distinguished speakers will explain much more. Uh, first of all is Afghanistan. Uh, our speaker from Afghanistan looks like trying to connect. I think we will see him later. Afghanistan uh, having big potential for mineral resources and potential transit hub for the Greater Caspian region. And as we know, all of us know, uh, during the latest uh, development on the peacemaking process, uh, Afghanistan finally could be safe and stable for international business and investment. And all doors are now being opened. Uh, speaker is uh, Mr. Abdul Karim Malikyar, acting deputy minister of industry and commerce of Afghanistan. We are waiting for him to will hopefully join us in the process. Now, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is a big producer of oil and gas, uh, and natural gas, and important logistics hub for the region. Azar Bayramov, he is advisor to the chairman, uh, state agency for public service and social innovations of the Republic of Azerbaijan. And before uh, this uh, position, he was also working as the executive director of the state fund for development of information technologies under the Minister of Transport, Communication and High Technologies of the Republic of Azerbaijan. He was also the chairman of uh, United UNCTAD Intergovernmental Expert Group on the Commerce and Digital Economy. Uh, now, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is the biggest producer of oil and mineral resources in the region. It's the uh, biggest country of the region, uh, 2.5 million square kilometers, and only 400 kilometers away from Indian border. And ambassador of Kazakhstan to India, Mr. Yerlan Alimbaev, uh, joined our session. And uh, he will tell us uh, a lot of information about investment potential of Kazakhstan. Uh, before India, uh, moving to India, he was national coordinator for cooperation with Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And he speaks Hindi. Uh, in parallel, you will see the presentation of State Investment Authority of Kazakhstan, Kazakh Invest. If you will have uh, any question, please send it to the chat, uh, which hopefully we will see here. Then I will try uh, to ask some of your questions to the speakers. Uh, and uh, this session, we'll, we will try to do in the format of the dialogue, uh, although it is very difficult uh, because we cannot see the delegates, we can only see the But if you see any interesting questions, I will uh, announce them, and then uh, speakers will, uh, will answer. Okay, now we are... I would like to invite Azar Bayramov. Uh, Azar. Uh, thank you very much, uh, distinguished colleagues, the meeting participants. 
Uh, I would like to thank, first of all, organizers for this opportunity. It's an honor to speak at Horizons India meeting. Uh, I think many people uh, of my generation would agree that uh, India, we, we are well familiar with the Indian culture and traditions uh, thanks to Indian movies, which was the only uh, the foreign movies which we can uh, watch in during Soviet times. Uh, I represent the State Agency for Public Services and uh, Social Innovations under President. And uh, this uh, also we have the, another name which is called Asan Service. Asan Service means easy service. So what uh, the, uh, that was the, the, ser the our agency was established uh, on the initiative of the President Ilham Aliyev on 2012, and uh, the, that was an integral part of the reforms in the sphere of public administration. Uh, Azerbaijan, this is the Azerbaijan model of rendering public and private services from one single window. So over 320 services are rendered in Asan service centers, including uh, like birth, deaths, ma marriage registration, identity cards, passport, driver license, uh, stuff like this. And at the same time, functional support services, including banking, insurance, legal su support, and others. So citizens can benefit from various public and private services in one uh, place, and, uh, just entering one, just one single uh, door. So uh, until now, we had uh, rendered uh, to citizens services to citizens uh, like based on more than 37 million applications, and the satisfaction rate of citizens is more than 99%. And uh, we have like uh, 20 Asan service centers throughout the country. And uh, uh, Asan service is also popular in the region and beyond uh, because we also we, we got a, a special uh, prize from United Nations on uh, United Nations Public Service Award, Award in the category of improving the delivery of public services. So Asan service has uh, uh, also been successful in the field of digitization and electronic services. Uh, uh, recently, Asan service also was in the forefront, forefront of the fight against COVID-19 uh, with its, its smart solutions and innovations. And we, one of them was the introduction of the special elect electronic permission system also for individual citizens and organizations. Uh, it has a uh, very positive feedback from uh, uh, public in Azerbaijan and also we attracted many uh, partners from abroad and uh, some of countries they are using now our system. Uh, in the meantime, uh, also I would like to mention that uh, the model of Asan service is also uh, attracted the attention of many other countries, especially in uh, South Asia. We work closely with Afghanistan, Indonesia, but also uh, with uh, African countries, Uganda, Morocco, and also in Central Asia with Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. And uh, uh, Asan, uh, one of the Asan's recent initiatives uh, was the Global Web Forum on Government Agile Response to COVID-19. Uh, where Murad also uh, took part and we did it with, in partnership with Caspian Week. Uh, the, the forum was also a successful step toward deeper and uh, coordinated partnership in response for the pandemic. And uh, uh, the forum has managed to raise the bar for importance of partnership among stakeholders across all, all aspects of fighting COVID-19. So now I come back to the uh, relations between India and Azerbaijan, which is extended back to ancient times. So the Great Silk Road, the ancient trade road, uh, linked our countries. Uh, the celebration of Baku as the city of sacred fires was a significant, significant future of Indian-Azerbaijan relations. It's uh, well known that one of the main centers of fire worship was ancient Baku. And uh, one of the most interesting and uh, historical monuments near Baku is the fire temple of Indian fire worship is called Atashka. Uh, due to its central location between Europe and Asia, Azerbaijan was playing the role of the trade hub of ancient times. And nowadays there are many uh, new initiatives to revive the Great Silk Road. So one of the uh, such initiatives is the North-South Transport Corridor, 
uh, which uh, the foundation of this uh, corridor was laid on the basis of the uh, intergovernmental uh, intergovernment agreement between three countries, uh, Russia, Iran, and India in 2000. And Azerbaijan joined this agreement in 2005. So the aim of this corridor is to reduce the delivery time of cargoes from India to Russia, as well as to Northern and Western Europe. Uh, at present, delivery time uh, on this road is over six weeks, six weeks, but it is expected to be three weeks uh, via North-South corridor. Uh, and also, uh, there are a lot of other initiatives where Azerbaijan is in the middle of these roads, uh, like uh, we recently, uh, we, many of you may, may heard about this. Uh, there is a port of Baku, which is like the biggest port in uh, our region, which is also plays a very important role in the uh, in the uh, like a con cargo conjunction between uh, regions. And uh, also, we uh, we have recently uh, built the Azerbaijan Tiflisi Cars Railway, which is also makes Asia and Europe more closer. Uh, current Azerbaijan accounts like 5.5 uh, of India's exports and ranks fourth in, the, uh, in this sense. And the trade turnover between Azerbaijan and India during nine uh, last year was uh, around one, uh, one billion dollars with uh, uh, 400 uh, well, 104 million in export and uh, about 9 million in import. Uh, but those two countries are not linked just by uh, trade links. Uh, more than 400 tourists, uh, uh, for 4,000 tourists traveled from India to Azerbaijan in 2008 and then more than 50,000 in 2019. But uh, of course, that all happened before uh, <laughs> a coronavirus outbreak. Uh, but uh, that was, uh, we hope that as soon as this crisis will be come to end, will we come to the end, uh, then we will have again this uh, tourist from Azerbaijan to India and from India to Azerbaijan. Um, so there are a lot of uh, opportunities. Uh, I, 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 say, I said about the several international uh, projects where India and Azerbaijan are partners. And there are really a lot of, uh, a lot, lot of uh, many other initiatives where we can uh, work together and uh, grow, grow uh, economies of the whole region, including uh, South Asian and the Caspian region can grow together. Uh, so um, at the moment we are facing an unprecedented uh, global challenge and only coordinated multi-stakeholder multi action uh, by businesses, governments, uh, and international organizations can mitigate the impact of the crisis and pave the way for recovery. So deep partnership and dialogue across regions will help uh, to pave the way to economic recovery and provide sustainable and digital new normal. So uh, I believe that today's meeting is another step toward deeper and coordinated partnership between our regions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Azar. Uh, just one question from my side. You mentioned that uh, trade turnover between Azerbaijan and India was $1 billion and $100 million of export and $900 million of import. And I see quite a bit disbalance on this. Uh, nine times bigger import. Uh, what, how you can explain this and what could be done to equalize this turnover? Because I think uh, long-term and sustainable development, uh, if you will go that way, uh, you should have more or less balanced import and export and that, because Azerbaijan is a big exporter uh, of uh, a lot of yeah. things. What oil. we know is uh, oil and gas, of course, but also petrochemicals, polymers, fertilizers, uh, and aluminum, and so on. And uh, why uh, this export was only $100 million per year? Uh, so I'm not economist uh, by myself, but uh, of course we, we read news, we, we, we try to know more than uh, usual citizens about the economic development of economic relations. Uh, I think uh, the, one of the reasons why we now work on this North-South corridor and uh, the Belt and Road initiative, so those uh, infrastructure 
will let us to you know to balance those uh, mm-hmm. uh, figures because uh, as soon as uh, as soon as uh, not uh, there will be railway from India coming to Europe through Azerbaijan, I think uh, uh, the numbers will rise immediately. So there they will be huge export from India. I mean, also to Azerbaijan, not only just uh, to, to the Western Europe. Okay. So I think okay. we, we need just to wait a few, I mean, as soon as those infrastructure corridors will be at the use of uh, governments and businesses. Thank you. Uh, by the way, one of the potential corridors could be through Afghanistan, subject to the peacemaking yeah. process. Uh, will be really successful, and we are, they are now on that way. Okay, uh, now I would like to invite His Excellency Ambassador of Republic of Kazakhstan to India, Mr. Yerlan Alimbaev. Uh, and then on the phone we will have the presentation of Kazakh Invest. Please. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. So, Murat, um, uh, I'm uh, really glad to be uh, here tonight. So, I wish to thank first uh, the Horace's uh, uh, Foundation and uh, all Indian parent, uh, partners who made this uh, important uh, meeting uh, happen. So, um, uh, also, I, as I told, I'm really pleased to share with you um, a brief overview of uh, Central Asia. Uh, in my case, it's Kazakhstan and India uh, Corporation. Uh, uh, this uh, February, Kazakhstan and India uh, celebrated the 28th anniversary uh, uh, of establishment of uh, di- diplomatic relations. Also, uh, our relations uh, ties go deep uh, into the days of the Great Silk, Way, uh, Silk Road. Uh, Kazakhstan and India being in uh, close proximity, uh, as uh, Murat uh, already mentioned, uh, are strategically important for each other. Uh, this is of uh, particular importance in the present uh, age of globalization, uh, when the world is rapidly t- turning into the, uh, one small village. Uh, today, we are pleased to know that over the past 28 years, uh, Kazakh Indian Corporation has been developing uh, uh, dynamically in all areas, uh, including uh, political, economic, and uh, cultural life. Uh, mutual desire and the rapid, rapid economic growth of both countries um, open up uh, broad prospects for constructive and uh, mutually beneficial cooperation. Uh, so in recent years, uh, bilateral interaction has experienced dynamic growth in uh, various fields. Uh, for example, trade turnover between Kazakhstan and India for 2019 uh, amounted to almost um, 1.9 billion U.S. dollars. Uh, and the volume of which exceeds the total turnover uh, uh, of India with all other uh, Central Asian countries. Uh, for uh, January, April uh, this year, uh, trade turnover amounted to 1.2 billion US dollars. Um, as uh, m- uh, most of you know, uh, the Kazakhstan uh, counts among the top 25 countries in the prestigious World Bank's doing business. Index and uh, investors' rights are given utmost priority and the protection uh, at the highest level uh, in Kazakhstan. Uh, during the years of independence, uh, inflow of foreign direct investments into Kazakhstan amounted to around uh, 350 billion US dollars, uh, and uh, 317 uh, million of uh, this amount is uh, belongs to Indian um, investments. So uh, you can see that this is a sign of investors' uh, confidence and the evidence that the country, uh, it may, I mean the Kazakhstan, uh, places significant uh, emphasis uh, to, to improve the investment climate in the country. Uh, as I mentioned, the in Indian investments uh, amounted to around uh, three, uh, 317 uh, US, million US dollars, which is less than one uh, percent actually uh, of the FDIs. Uh, so there is a huge potential and the room uh, to enhance uh, investment cooperation in uh, such uh, priority sectors as mining, uh, chemistry, petrochemistry industry, uh, agriculture, and the food processing, uh, textile. And uh, uh, in some uh, means, uh, the uh, production of electronic uh, gadgets and uh, so on. 
for introducing Indian business with opportunities uh, to expand the business through investments. Last May, our national investment company, Kazakh Invest, opened uh, its office in uh, New Delhi, which is now based at the embassy of Kazakhstan. So we invite Indian business to explore past opportunities uh, that Kazakhstan has uh, on offer and begin a new stage of cooperation. Uh, nowadays, we have uh, in Kazakhstan about 500 legal entities and uh, branches uh, with a, uh, a participation of Indian capital uh, registered uh, in Kazakhstan. And uh, I want to mention that the National Bank of Punjab uh, shares 41.64% in Tengli Bank of Kazakhstan in Almaty City, where over uh, four, uh, 200 accounts of Indian uh, companies opened over the uh, past two years. Uh, in order to enhance cooperation, uh, six joint working groups we have uh, between uh, two countries. And uh, the main one, the Intergovernmental Commission, uh, has been uh, created. Uh, so, so far we had uh, uh, 13 uh, meetings of this Intergovernmental Commission. Uh, we have a uh, good institute of uh, honorary councils of Kazakhstan in Indian cities of Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Kolkata, Chennai and Hyderabad. Uh, uh, their contribution to boosting bilateral trade and investment ties as well as introducing Kazakhstan's business opportunities to Indian uh, entrepreneurship community is uh, invaluable. Uh, cooperation in the field of civilian and nuclear energy is developing uh, productively. Uh, bilateral relations are being established in the, uh, in the field of oil and gas, uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, uh, biotechnological sectors, uh, the space industry, as well as in the field of science and technology. As I mentioned before, a branch of the leading Indian Punjab National Bank is successfully operating in Kazakhstan. In general, the conditions uh, and the perspective for the development of Kazakh-Indian relations show that we have chosen the right vector for the development of cooperation. Uh, of course, the existing, existing potential uh, is huge and uh, practically unlimited. Uh, Kazakhstan uh, will continue to strive using uh, all the opportunities and the embassy will uh, do its best uh, to raise a strategic partnership um, to an uh, even uh, highest level. So now, uh, for example, we are expecting the visits of Prime Minister of Kazakhstan to India uh, while participating in the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization's uh, uh, meeting of the uh, Council of uh, state uh, governments, uh, heads of governments in uh, November, somehow, uh, if uh, the situation is uh, good. And uh, we are now have uh, the invitation uh, by the, uh, the President of India uh, to uh, address to our President to visit uh, uh, India with a state visit. Uh, so we are working on these two uh, uh, highest level visits. And uh, of course, we have some other uh, uh, high-level visits as well. And uh, coming uh, to the regional aspect, I would like to underline that today um, Central Asia and India are, um, we can say, uh, rediscovering each other, especially after the visit of uh, Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri uh, Narendra Modiji, uh, to all Central Asia countries in 2015. Uh, India demonstrates a desire to strengthen a constructive partnership with all Central Asian countries and that we express the same intention. Uh, we are sharing uh, common historical uh, ties and uh, that today are transforming into uh, new uh, multifaceted realities. Uh, most importantly, uh, the leaders of Central Asian countries and the Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi uh, regularly meet each other and uh, stand behind these uh, efforts to strengthen uh, bilateral relations. Um, Actually, at large, the Central Asian states, as uh, my colleague uh, mentioned before, um, uh, have uh, we share especially uh, friendly, friendly, friendly relations with India, and uh, we are open for business uh, cooperation, exchange of experience, etc. India has a good reputation uh, among the population and the business uh, in uh, Central Asian countries, uh, and of course, we have uh, good uh, uh, deep roots. Uh, due to um, the, our common culture and the history, and um, especially uh, so-called soft power of the Indian film industry. 
uh, which uh, which uh, has won the hearts of uh, millions and, uh, around the globe and uh, including Central Asia. Uh, so important place in enhancing trade and economic relations uh, uh, between uh, Central Asia and India belongs to transit and the transport routes. India, with its developed infrastructure and the modern uh, ports and the terminal, makes uh, this region of South Asia um, one of the main international arteries. Uh, using this potential uh, with a favorable development may positively actually affect the general economic situation uh, on, of the countries of Central Asia. Uh, however, as we all know, the main obstacle uh, we are facing now is um, and uh, to to um, intensification uh, to uh, uh, to boost our trade and economic cooperation um, is a lack of um, permanent and um, uh, land uh, transport uh, routes roads. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, to in order to solve uh, our uh, this main problem, um, in our opinion, it's necessary to. Uh, use uh, to launch in its uh, full operational capacity this um, uh, international north-south uh, transport corridor uh, INSTC and uh, the the all uh, opportunities of Chabahar port and uh, of course we have the Ashgabat agreement uh, which will uh, allow us to open all um, all doors to the markets of South Asia and uh, uh, as well as Southeast Asia and the uh, Gulf countries. Uh, the full opening of these routes, um, I think, the, will significantly uh, reduce the cost and time, as uh, Mr. Az Azar told, uh, the, uh, the economic, uh, the cost and time trans of transporting goods, and it will play an important role um, to develop the trade and economic cooperation. Uh, so, uh, also, we have a, one uh, good. Um, uh, tool to realize uh, and uh, the tasks set for the development of trade economic relations. Uh, it's a um, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, uh, having almost all uh, Central Asian countries and uh, Russia and China uh, within this organization. I think that it can, it can, and it should uh, play the a big role in uh, changing the trade economic scenario actually in the region. And uh, we also, uh, as uh, you know, the, we uh, consider it necessary to expedite uh, the work to conclude the free trade agreement between uh, uh, the member states of Eurasian Economic Union and uh, with India. And uh, uh, coming to the uh, institutionalization of uh, relations, um, I wish to say that we have uh, all initial uh, intergovernmental structures. Uh, for example, uh, since last year, January, we have uh, the dialogue in the Central Asia, uh, and um, this year uh, we uh, uh, we have had the uh, first meeting of the uh, the business forum uh, of Central Asia and India. So, of course, they, because of this coronavirus situation, uh, and so no, many things has, have been postponed. But hopefully, we will um, uh, continue our work and that the, the next meetings will happen uh, in coming uh, months. So we invite uh, all the um, Indian uh, business community to, to uh, play an active and a major role in drawing a common uh, future of Central Asia and uh, India. So thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, I will just like to add, uh, looks like uh, from the speech of representative of Azerbaijan and also representative of Kazakhstan, there are definitely a lot of things to be done on logistics side. Uh, as you correctly mentioned, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, on the long term perspective, our region is landlocked. And uh, even uh, we have uh, one of the two countries in the world, which is Uzbekistan, who has no border, uh, who has no neighbors, who has borders with the sea, <laughs> more than the sea, <laughs> like two countries away from the sea. Uh, but uh, for now, it is a strategic disadvantage and strategic uh, complication for our region. And uh, that's why uh, we need to really make uh, big efforts uh, to solve this issue. And one of the possibilities, uh, what I see uh, from what 
uh, from what is available, it is possibly to develop container transportation uh, from the Greater Caspian region to the world and from the world to the Greater Caspian region. Because if you see about this 900 million import to Azerbaijan, I think most prob probably all these cargoes are going inside containers. And uh, logically, Azerbaijan should be able to load the same containers and send it back to India or China or just outside to the big world. The same situation is, in, uh, is with Kazakhstan, but uh, numbers here are bigger. And I suppose a lot of export is going on from Kazakhstan to India, but mainly on the oil and gas sector, maybe and mineral resources. But I think also for the final products, also there is a big possibility to move uh, the cargoes in containers, especially when these corridors, they already exist, and north-south and also east-west corridor. Uh, this is one uh, command. The second one is in Kazakhstan, there is a unique opportunity also to have your business and to have uh, in the Astana International Financial Center, uh, where you can do your business under the English law and the English arbitration clause, which is very important because if uh, uh, Indian businessmen will come to Kazakhstan, for them, the same is for Azerbaijan, the same is for Turkmenistan and any country of the region, for them it's very difficult to handle business, maintain business, and then having dispute resolution clause like local law, which they have no idea what it is about. Uh, mm -hmm. that's why, uh, we are very happy to see that in uh, Kazakhstan, in Astana International Financial Center, it's already done and they already implemented. They have already uh, English arbitrators, uh, which they are inviting from UK. And uh, I think there's a good example and a good uh, uh, for, for the whole region. And uh, also there is another initiative which we saw uh, the, during the last two years. Uh, so there is a Caspian Arbitration Center is being developed. Uh, and uh, this is some kind of a replacement of international arbitration for the Greater Caspian region. Uh, because on the other side, for the English lawyers, English judges, English arbitrators, it's very difficult to understand uh, the specific of the region. They don't know what is right, what is wrong in the region, and they will judge this as per English rules and English uh, regulation. Uh, but maybe this is also another opportunity uh, to do things. Yes, this is our Caspian Week logo, but later on. Yes, uh, and also uh, with today's problem of uh, coronavirus with COVID-19, uh, also very important to find a way how to move cargos uh, on the safe w safe way. I will I told it like anti-COVID compliant way, and maybe for that this uh, container transportation also given a good opportunity because with containers you are handling cargos manually or only limited uh, limited uh, n n n limited numbers. Uh, because when you are doing full transshipment of the uh, cargo, bulk cargo, or, uh, then you should really involve people. For containers, it could be done automatically. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Ambassador, for your detailed presentation. I see a lot of comments from our audience, from our delegates. Uh, they are very excited with this presentation. Thank you for such a delight, detailed and insightful session. Uh, also, there is uh, one delegate uh, there is one delegate who was working before as advisor to the president of Kyrgyzstan, and uh, also his yes, yes, okay. uh, also uh, he's uh, sending good comments. Okay, now finally, uh, welcome uh, to our session, and uh, I would like to welcome Mr. Abdul Karim Malikyar, acting deputy minister of industry and commerce of Afghanistan, and. Uh, as I already told, Afghanistan having big uh, potential for mineral resources and potential transit hub for Greater Caspian region. And uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, peacemaking process is significantly developed and moved uh, during the last months. And we hope now that uh, Afghanistan will be open for international investments on the safe way, stable way, sustainable way. And uh, I would like also to give the floor uh, to Deputy Minister to tell us what is the situation in Afghanistan and uh, how the, uh, how the situation was developed and how Afghanistan can cooperate with India and how to develop this cooperation. Thank you.
Yes, uh, well, uh, good evening, everybody here in this uh, webinar. I am very glad to be here. Actually, it was used to Mr. Ajmal Ahmadi. He is now the governor, the governor of the State Bank. He would be proceed with this uh, talk, but unfortunately, he got a very urgent meeting with His Excellency, President of Afghanistan. So now, on behalf of Ajmal Ahmadi, I am here to attend in this uh, great opportunity. I would like to appreciate for the organizer. As you know, Afghanistan is the heart of the Asia, and we have a very close uh, trade ties with uh, India, with the Central Asian. I really appreciate from the, our neighboring countries, especially the Kyrgyz and uh, Uzbek, Turkmenistan, and the rest of uh, Central Asia. And during the COVID-19, we got a lot of support in terms of the necessity equipment, such as for the me the medical uh, sectors. And as well as from India, and uh, we got a lot of uh, the the primary uh, needs of Afghanistan. So you know that Afghanistan is the the linkage between uh, Central Asia and uh, South Asia, and we we prepare a number of legislation in terms how to utilize this uh, opportunity to link the Central Asian country in terms of the energy, in, ter in terms of the gas and oil and these of the things. So we will uh, we will be in the loop to how we can uh, uh, more uh, strengthen the relation of uh, this uh, project like TAPI and there is CASA project for the transfer of energy. And there is a number of initiatives in the, in the region. So Afghanistan is for sure in terms of the policy, in terms of the, in term of the, the legislation, we are quite uh, willing to, to speed up the process of uh, this uh, initiative in the region. Thank you. And in that context, if there is any specific question for a Minister of Trade, and I would be, it would be my great pleasure to respond uh, on behalf of Afghanistan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Uh, now I would like uh, to tell you some interesting facts uh, about the Greater Caspian region countries, for the countries which are not represented by the speakers. Let's start from Georgia. Georgia is number seven in the world uh, for the world, world Bank rating, ease of doing business. Also, there are free trade agreements signed between Georgia and the uh, European Union and between Georgia and China, which is quite unique. Kyrgyzstan, uh, largest walnut forest in the world, 6,000 square kilometer area. Tajikistan, uh, one of the biggest silver mines in the world, and also they have the highest dam in the world, three, 304 meters, which is Nurek hydropower station. Turkmenistan, fourth biggest natural gas resources reserves in the world. Uzbekistan, one of only two countries, I already told, which neighbors have no access to the sea. Uh, 26 fastest develop, uh, developing economy in the world. Looks like right after Kazakhstan, because Kazakhstan is 25th, as I remember. And fourth biggest in the world, gold reserves, seventh uranium and tenth copper. It's just uh, for the delegates of our friends from India to understand a little bit more about our greater Caspian region. Now we are moving to the questions to the speakers. Uh, I would like to ask you just in a few words, several ideas, uh, give the answer for the following question. Question number one, what would you do, main three strategic things, to boost development of cooperation between Greater Caspian region and India? And India? Let's start from Azerbaijan. Azar, please. Okay, I would like again to uh, back to the public service business. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have a very good relations with Afghanistan. For example, uh, as I told you, the, our Asan service model is already in place in Afghanistan, and uh, it's, uh, they have uh, Asan Khidmat, which is under, uh, if I'm not wrong, under Ministry of uh, Information Technologies of Af Afghanistan, and they, they use the a concept uh, of uh, public service centers. Uh, it's even the um, uh, the legislation and the training of uh, their staff was uh, done by our assistance. So uh, 
we, we, we are happy to have this uh, co deep cooperation with Afghanistan and we are uh, lucky that uh, uh, we also uh, developed our capacity through this cooperation. Uh, I, if I'm not wrong, uh, just in January 2020, we had the last delegation from uh, Afghanistan just before the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, they came for uh, uh, training. Uh, I think we there, there is a really untapped potential also between uh, uh, Azerbaijan and India and also in the uh, public service uh, sphere. We can also work um, with them on our model, which is uh, also, uh, I mean, there are a lot of countries now interested to use our Asan service model and uh, we will be glad to cooperate with Indian partners. And uh, I, I still believe that uh, our action is not matching uh, the potential of our regions. So okay. there are a lot, of, there, there, there are uh, room uh, to develop uh, uh, our partnerships. Thank you, Azar. Unfortunately, we are now running out of time. That's why we should move a little bit faster. Now, uh, please, Ambassador, your ideas. Yeah. Uh... As, uh, as as I said all before, the main things I think strategically to do for development of cooperation is uh, the transport uh, issue and the logistics first. And uh, second is harmonization of legislative and uh, regulatory measures uh, when uh, and where uh, required. And um, active uh, third is active uh, mutual interest to explore common, common business uh, opportunities. Okay, thank you. Now, Deputy Minister, your, your turn. Microphone. I think there are two platforms very necessary to be taken into account. The first one is the multilateral system that we know we are in the region. Most of our country, they are a member of the WTO and they have a very liberal uh, trade system. So there is a number of agreements like GATT, GATS, and there are some pharmaceutical issues and term of the legislation. And the second platform is the Article 24 of GATT. I mean the regionalism. There is a number of uh, efforts uh, to be shot speed up, like uh, we have a number of agreements like eco agreement in terms of the Central Asian country. They are also part of the eco organization. Afghanistan is also part of that platform. At the same time, Pakistan is also a member of uh, this initiative. At, at, the num at the same time, we have a uh, SARC uh, organization. There is a number of uh, agreements like uh, SATIS and SAFTA. So these are covered the, uh, the regional activity. I mean, the deeper integration of uh, the countries in terms of the trade and investment and this opportunity to make uh, more available. At the same time, the necessary tools would be reform. So reform, as uh, my friend uh, says that from Georgia, that is true. And we send a number of delegation to learn how the Georgia make uh, enabling environment better than uh, other country. So we copied some system like Asan Khidmat as well as we have ACBR system. So based on that, so in the past we had a business uh, requirement like more than one month. It was necessary to pursue your application to to obtain your uh, business license. But now it's like like three hours. At the same time, we are providing the VIP service. So that is the the, the condition of uh, reform in Afghanistan. So uh, that's you know there is a separate issue. You have one uh, something in the national level, and the second, the second step, you have some initiative in the regional level. So I think both of them is necessary to synchronize with each other. For instance, I want to be a member of uh, some initiative with the Central Asian. So I need to reform my system, my policies, my legislation. So that is something from our perspective that's worked very well. Thank you. Okay, now we have only one minute, zero second left. That's why I will just ask you to name one specific project which you think uh, could be would have highest importance for the Indian relation, economic relation with the Greater Caspian region. Just one project. If you don't have an uh, answer, no problem, because we're really out of time, running out of time. Azar, please. 
it would it would be energy and transfer of gas in an aisle from Central Asia to India. For instance, CASA project, that is the most important project for South Asian because we have a lot of energy in Central Asia. Okay. So there's a big demand in the South Asian. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, Azar, please. What, what uh, I think the transport, transport infrastructure project and also digital infrastructure projects. Okay. Like, uh, we can talk about Azerbaijan digital project or North South uh, corridor. So, okay, thank you, Ambassador. So, mining and the metallurgy and the production of electronic devices and uh, food uh, processing. Thank you. I will also mention one strategic project uh, which is called uh, TAPI Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India gas pipeline project. And the Deputy Minister just mentioned energy and gas transmission. And I think this project is strategically and vitally important and for India because they can start switching from coal to natural gas, bypassing oil and oil products in, uh, for producing energy, which brings sustainable development, ecology, and also help with the climate change. And also vitally important for Afghanistan because it's a transit country, uh, income of the hard currency and uh, jobs, additional jobs, and Turkmenistan as a producing country. And... Uh, now I will just would make a short conclusion what we discussed. Uh, and I think uh, we got great information from the speakers about their countries, about possibilities to cooperate. And as we see, uh, Greater Caspian region is really open for cooperation with India. And the uh, region is welcoming Indian business to come, invest, do business, and they will get full support. They will be protected from the legal legislation, regulation point of view. There are plenty of opportunities. Welcome to the region. And uh, from my side, uh, I think uh, we should also move not only on bilateral level, but also on the regional level. I consider the Greater Caspian region like one unit. And uh, uh, that this one unit could be a business partner for India, for China, for European Union, for United States, and for the whole world. Because together, we are much stronger than separately. Together, we can do a lot of things which we cannot do alone, each country separately. And this approach, we uh, believe, uh, uh, we, we believe, and we started to implement into the activity of a Greater Caspian Association, which I'm representing here. Also on the Caspian Week Forum in Davos, which we are doing every year. Next time will be 25th, 29th of January 2021. We will see how this will go with the uh, possibly second wave of coronavirus, hopefully will not happen. But we're inviting everybody there. And thank you for your attention. Thank you for our great speakers. Uh, and uh, thank you for our delegates, for the audience, for the interesting questions, and uh, for being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you for the, thank such you. a novel opportunity for us. And for sure, just one point I would like to make sure that the top is not only the economic project and from political perspective, it is very important, not only for Afghanistan, for the rest of the region, I mean, for Pakistan, India, because this is a big, because of the top, we made a number of reform in terms of the, uh, the legislation and regulation. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bien,